So now that we've actually got FileBeat up and running and imported some access logs into Elasticsearch, let's use Kibana to visualize that data using the dashboards that come with FileBeat. Makes life a lot easier and it's pretty fun too, so let me show you how to get started. So while your server is still running, go ahead and pull up Kibana. To do that, just go to 127.0.0.1 colon 5601 and you should get to a screen that looks maybe something like this. Click on the Management tab, and the first thing we need to do is create an index pattern for our new FileBeat index that we imported. So click on Index Patterns. And right now, you should just have that Shakespeare pattern that we used earlier in the course, but let's add one for the actual access logs that we just imported. So say Create Index Pattern, and type in FileBeat-star, and hit Enter. And sure enough, it found a file beat index that we can play with. And here are some of the fields that we have to work with here. It's good to familiarize yourself with them. For So for example, if you wanted to look at response codes, that would be under apache2.access.response underscore code. So this is the structure that FileBeat has imparted upon our log data while importing it directly into Elasticsearch. All right, so we have that. We can make that our default if you'd like. And let's mess around with it. Let's go to the Discover tab and see what's in there. It kind of explore some of the data. And you can see we're still in the Shakespeare index. So we have to switch that. Just click on Shakespeare and change that to file beat. Now it's going to say no results found. And this can be very confusing. So don't let this discourage you. There really is data there. The trick is that you need to get the right time range. Okay, so up here in the corner, you see where it says last 15 minutes? That means that you're only looking at data that came in during the last 15 minutes. And since we're using an older log file that was generated in uh, May of 2017, in order to see anything in Kibana, first we need to change the time field, the time range to actually encompass the data that we have to work with. So click on that, and now we can change that to absolute, and change this to the first week of May. So we'll go from May 1st, 2017, to May 6th, 2017, and hit go. And now, after that does a little bit of searching, it should come back with some actual results. All right, that's more like it. So this is more interesting. So we're seeing already here just a count of how many documents came in, how many individual access hits or log lines occurred over time during this date range. So you can see there was a big peak of activity on May 5th around midnight. Hmm, I wonder if that was a spider or a bot of some sort. I bet it was. And you can kind of preview some of the data here as well. So if you want to explore any individual uh, time entry here, you can open that up and see what's in there. Okay. So from here, you can do searches. So uh, for example, if you did want to search for 500 you know, server errors, for example, you could copy and paste this um, apache2.access.response code here, for example. And the syntax up here is just field name, colon, whatever you want. So that will give you back all the 500 errors. And you can see that they occurred in a big old spike on May 5th. We'll explore that more deeply in a moment. Uh, you can also just click on these things, too, and say add, and automatically take a look at it that way, too and explore it in more depth. So if you want to look at individual 500s, that would be a good way of doing it. You can see that this one's coming from Beijing, China. And uh, this is why we installed that GeoIP plugin for Elasticsearch, by the way. It allows you to see very easily where these IP addresses are coming from, which can be useful for tracing down where issues like this are originating from. This one came from Mountain View, North America, so probably just Googlebot or something. Take a look at another one here. Kiev, interesting, all right. But, you know, looking at textual results is all well and good, but I want pretty charts and graphs. You know, that's what we came here for. I want something that can give Google Analytics a run for its money, only it's for free, and I run it all myself. The great news is we imported a bunch of dashboards as part of installing FileBeat previously, so let's use them. Just click on the Dashboard tab here and look at all these goodies that we have. If we go back to the dashboard main dashboard page here, you can see there are many to choose from. Uh, we are using an Apache 2 log, so we're going to click on FileBeat Apache 2 dash dashboard and check that out. So this looks, you know, pretty useful. We're seeing a nice little chart here of all the hits per time, per minute here, uh, from the log data that we're using in the date range that we specified. And you can drill in on these. You can see they're stack bar charts, so they're actually telling you, um, broken down by access code, what's going on here. And you can see there, there's that little anomaly of 500s there that's uh, sticking out on top of that particular time slot on the midnight hour of May 5th. And down here, you can see things like how the request codes break down. You can see we had a little bit of a flurry of 301s at one point. This is how the access URLs break down. Uh, you can look at the actual breakdown of browsers that are hitting your data. That's kind of cool, too. 
uh, broken down you know, by Chrome and individual versions of Chrome on this outer ring, for example. That's how to read this one. So this inner ring is the browser type, and then we have individual versions of that browser broken down outside of that ring as well. You can also take a look at what operating systems are hitting your website with this little graph here. You can see that uh, Other is pretty popular, and that's because bots like my site as much as humans do. Um, but you know, all sorts of cool stuff. And if we had configured things to import error logs as well, we'd see even more stuff. You know, since we're only dealing with an access log in this particular example, we're only seeing half of what this has to offer. But you can see it's pretty cool stuff. You can also see that there's a hotspot here. Uh, looks like it's in Moscow. So for example, you can also drill down here. I mean, the best way to learn this is to just play around with it. So I encourage you to just play around with it. Let's uh, drill in on that 500 spike there that we had. And you can see if I click on this individual piece of the stack bar chart, up here it prompts me to apply the following filters. So do I really want to narrow down my visualization to 500 access codes during this particular hour? Yes, yes I do. And now we can see that this flurry of 500s came during a very specific time range between 7.15 and 8.15 of May 5th, 2017. And furthermore, it came from these places. So, you know, if we actually click on that, we can actually expand any of these, by the way, to get a closer look. So let's go ahead and open up that map and we can drill in and see that that's actually coming from Moscow. I'm not making this up, folks. Someone from Moscow was hitting my site hard this at this time and actually crashed my server for a while. So, <laughs> Uh, conspiracy? Probably not. It's probably just some spider, some innocuous search engine because, because frankly, this website isn't scaled very robustly. So <clears throat> probably not evil. It's probably my fault for not having enough capacity. But anyway, there you have it. Uh, we can close back out of this, shrink it back down, and uh, remove these filters by just hitting the trash can here. And we're back to where we started. And you can put the date range back to whatever you want as well. So Fiddle around, and in our next lecture, I'll give you a little bit of a challenge to try and find a specific answer to a specific problem. So let's try that next.